Evening, everyone. Happy Sabbath. God is good. All the time. Amen. We, pray God, we praise God for another Sabbath. And uh, we also praise God for the opportunity He has given us to be among the living. We have, as a final generation, we have a great privilege that has never been given to any other generation. The only generation who had such a privilege was the generation who saw and experienced the first advent of Jesus Christ. But this generation has a much, much more greater privilege than those who witness the first advent of Christ, because we are witnessing the final fulfillment of Bible prophecies. And we have a mission which is very similar to that of John the Baptist. And what is that mission? It is to prepare a people for the second advent of Jesus Christ. This is a much greater mission than that of John. Do you know why? Because there was still more time for people to come to repentance after the first advent of Christ. But with us, with this final generation, there's no more time. There will be no more time left after the second coming takes place. So our mission is a whole lot greater than that of John the Baptist. I believe if Christ were still walking, physically walking upon this earth, he would say something similar to what he said about John the Baptist. You remember when he said, of all that have been born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. And the 144,000, I believe Christ would have said the same thing of them because of their mission. Let's have a word of prayer. Abba, Father, which art in heaven, as we sang a moment ago, great is thy faithfulness, God Almighty. We pray, Father, that we will experience this evening and throughout this weekend, your faithfulness, your grace, your mercies towards us, your love for us. We pray this evening that you would bless the words that will proceed out of this mortal man's mouth. Let them be your words. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, as I mentioned in the announcement, I want to share with you, by God's grace, this weekend, on this blessed Sabbath day, tonight and tomorrow night, uh, some of the ways that the church, the Seventh Adventist Church, has been experiencing a shaking. And uh, it will not stop until the close of probation for the church. Now, notice this on the screen with me. Now, those passages I have... On the left side of your screen, the first one is Genesis 3, 6. The next one is Genesis 25, verses 9 through 34. The next one is Daniel 1, 20. Then Matthew 4, verse 4. And then John chapter 6, verses 16 or 66. You can even begin before that verse there. But you can go all the way to verse 71. Next to Genesis 3, 6, I have the word good with a question mark. Next to Genesis 25, I have the word despised. Next to Daniel 1, 20, I have the word wiser. Next to Matthew 4, verse 4, I have 
every word. And then in John 6, verses 66 through 71, from that moment on. And then to your right, a very familiar passage, which is Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Let's read that together. It says, saying with a what? A loud voice. What else? Fear God and give glory to Him. Why? For the hour of His judgment is come and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Who is being judged here? According to Revelation 14, 7. God is being judged. That's what it says. God is being judged. What is about God that is being judged? That is his character. His character is being judged. It started in heaven based on Revelation 12. Tomorrow morning, by God's grace, we'll, we'll go into Revelation 12 and also Ezekiel chapter 28. And we're going to look at how the great controversy started, how it started, and how it will also end. But for now, we are told here in Revelation 14, 7, that God is being judged. But the beginning of the verse says, to give Him glory. Now those words, give Him glory, they are associated with those passages we have on the left. And there was one other passage I forgot to put on the screen, which is the passage where it says, to glorify God with your body. Now, can you tell me, base, I know some of you are already looking at those, or looking up those verses, because I can see Bible passages, or your Bible being uh, turned, but can you tell me what relationship, or what do those Bible passages have in common. Can you tell me? Some of you have already looked some of, uh, some of them already. What do they have in common? We have the word good with a question mark, despise, wiser, every word from that moment on. What do they have in common? You, are you still thinking? Huh? What? Uh, sp speak up. How we can glorify God? Is that what you said? Spoken by God? All of those words are spoken by God? Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Spoken by God. I got that. Okay. I'll take it. What else? Huh? What do they have in common? Did you know that all of those passages have to do with one of the key ways to glorify God in these last days, they have to do with our health message. They have everything to do with our health message. For example, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. You should know that passage. Remember in chapter 2, God says, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not good to eat. It was not good for food, right? What did the serpent say in Genesis 3? The serpent tempted Eve and said, God did know that from the day ye eat thereof, what will happen? Your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as God. The devil said, if you eat, you, your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God. You will be wiser, right? A whole lot wiser. And keep in mind also, the devil there accused God. The devil gossiped against God. I'll come back to that tomorrow. But then the Bible says in verse 6, when the woman saw, what is the word saw there? What are those, uh, the three areas where we fall into sin? Three areas the Bible described. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the, and the pride of life. When the woman saw, what is that? The loss of the eyes, right? And uh, what else does Genesis 3 says? After she saw that the fruit was good for food, right? And it's what? It says he, she reached out and take it. That is what now? 
Where are we now? You will find all three of the of those areas where we fall short from the glory of God. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and then one to make, it says that it will make one wise. That's the pride of life. That's the pride of life. Was it good for food? No, no it was not good for food. What happened as a result? Sin, she defiled the body and also Adam. The next passage, Genesis 25, beginning in verse 29. Do you know what this passage is dealing with? Huh? That is Jacob and Esau. What was the situation there? What was this pies? In chapter 25. What was this pies? The birthright. The birthright. Did Adam despite the birthright as well? Yes. When she listened to the voice of the woman, and she defiled, I mean, he defiled himself, so he despised the birthright. Now, what is the significance about the birthright? The birthright also represents salvation. But what was the key ingredient that caused both Adam and Esau to despise the birthright? Food. Appetite. It was food. Now, moving on. Daniel 1. All of you should know this one. Without guessing it. What was the chapter about? The chapter was about food as well. Nebuchadnezzar gave a, a decree or passed a decree that all those young men that were chosen to become his uh, minister, prime minister and so on, ambassadors, they should do what? Partake? Of the king's table. But Daniel and his friends. The Bible says. Purpose in their heart. In their minds. That they would not do what? Defile the what? The body. They would not eat from the king's table. Long story short. As a result of this. What happened? God honored them. Because they honor God. And they became uh, ten times wiser. Matthew 4 verse 4. Satan came. And tempted Christ in the wilderness. What happened there? Turn those stones into bread. Right? And what did Jesus say? Men shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Who got the glory in that great controversy? During that great controversy? Christ. God the Father in this case. Remember, he was there fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Next passage. John chapter 6, verses 66 through 71. As I mentioned, you can even begin before that verse there. In that chapter, Jesus was describing how he is the bread of life who came down from heaven. He is what? The bread of life. He said, my father... Gave you the manna in the wilderness. Right? But I am the true bread. Because the manna decayed. The manna, you had to eat it right away or prepared it. But Jesus is the everlasting true bread of life. If you eat my flesh, he said, you shall never die. But the Bible tells us in verse 66, the majority... Did not want to hear that. And they forsook him. The Bible says. From that moment on. They went away. They forsook him. Now what was that passage there about again? Bread. Food. The food that God was prescribing. They rejected it. Now let's combine all of those passages. And there are many more. Let's combine all of those passages. With the Advent mission, Adventist mission. Do we have a health reform message which is part of our fundamental beliefs? Yes. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that when Christ came, one of the ways 
that he shook the church then is by healing people, by meeting their needs. He used the health message to shake the church then. As I mentioned a moment ago, we as a movement are being shaken in so many ways. Let me give you some examples. Go to your Bible now. Matthew chapter 10, speaking of the mission of Jesus Christ. Thing two, Matthew chapter 10. Notice carefully the mission. So we'll begin with the mission that the, that Jesus gave to the disciples. Hope you have your Bible. Verse five, the Bible says, these 12, Jesus sent forth and commended them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritan, enter ye not. But go rather to where? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. The first mission of the disciples was to go where? House of Israel. So likewise, our first mission is to go where? To the lost sheep. Remember, they are lost where? Within the church. They are lost within the church. You see, our primary mission before the close of probation for Israel is to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's not until after the close of probation, which also marked the beginning of the National Sunday Law, which is also the time of the refreshing, which is the outpouring of the latter rain, which is also known as the loud cry message. That's when we go to the world with power. But for now, our primary, I'm not saying we should not reach to the world right now. I'm saying primarily before probation closes for Israel, our primary mission is to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Remember, that's how the disciples did it. But when they fully rejected the message, then the apostle says, because you rejected, now we turn to whom? To the Gentiles. So while we are calling those who are in the world to come to the fold, but our primary mission, focus, is to those who are already here in the house of Israel because they have been lost. Sitting in the pews, yet they are lost. Let's continue. Jesus went on to say in verse 7, And as he go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is what? Is at hand. To whom was this message given? It was to lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now notice, you would think that you are reading the great commission of Matthew chapter 28, for example, or even Revelation chapter 14, where we are taught, or chapter 18 as well, to go and call the people out of Babylon. But this is not dealing with Babylon. This is dealing with the house of Israel. It says, verse 8, heal the what? The sick. Amen. Notice, as they preach, they are to do what? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Did God give them the health message to go along with the proclamation of the preaching of the gospel? Yes, it goes hand in hand. And we find this in several of the passages. The health message, as I mentioned, just like Christ began his preaching with healing and even sent the disciples to also heal and preach, that caused a shaking within Israel. That was one of the reasons why many within Israel came and started to flock towards him wherever he was. As a matter of fact, let me take you to another passage. Go to Matthew 4 this time. Where are we heading to? Matthew chapter 4. Notice in Matthew chapter 4 what the Bible says. Now, I bet you did not that our health message must cause a shaking within the church. It caused a shaking in the time of Christ. Chapter 4. Saints? Notice carefully with me in verse 23. It says, Jesus went about 
all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, again, this is Israel, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and what else? And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And what else? As a result of this, his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy. And he healed them. Wait. Everything that the Bible just described here is happening within Israel. This was the condition of the house of Israel. They were sick. They were sick, brothers and sisters. Sick physically, sick spiritually. That was the condition. And the same thing is happening today. God allowed a test to come our ways in 2020. Because of the position of the leadership, many within the house of Israel are sick today. Many are sick. Now, let me make this here. Did you know that the test, the pestilent test in 2020 that came was not for the leadership. It was for the members. Let me repeat that one more time. The test, the Pestilent test crisis that came upon the world and upon the church was not for the leadership of seven Adventists. It was for the members. Now, why did I say that? Because we knew from many, many, many years ago, as they say, from many moons ago, the leadership has been in apostasy. Members needed to be tested now. Did you get me now? We, as members, knowing full well that those men, the organization was in full-blown apostasy, now God had to test the members to see if, by allowing the COVID crisis to come upon the world, upon the church, to see if the members now would listen to the leadership telling them to follow the science. Did we do that? The majority of us did that. We listened to the leadership and we follow the quote-unquote science above the Bible. Even when we saw, we heard clearly that they were contradicting the Bible. Yet, we went along with it. One more time. The test was not for the leadership. It was for the members. It was for the members. Now, there is a much bigger coming for the members. Do you know what that bigger test is? Another one. Now, let me give you an example. You see, when Jesus in Matthew 23, going into Matthew 24, he prophesied of the destruction of Jerusalem, the structure, the organization, right? Then, the test came in AD 66 for the Members, not for the leadership. Because the word of God will not go out or come back to him void. What Jesus said would take place, must take place. But when Cestius came in AD 66, the test was for the members. It was for them to see if they will stick leadership or will they take the opportunity and get out of the city. Those who listened and remembered the word of Jesus Christ, they fled. But the leadership remained. They remained. And what happened? Three and a half years later, AD 70, Titus came. He brought back the Roman army. And this time the dragon encircled Jerusalem and destroyed Jerusalem and everybody in it. That test is also coming. That great test. Which will be the national Sunday law. Now by the way. It will not come by itself. You see. Dragon has already established. A health protocol. Let me repeat that. 
The dragon has already established health protocol. That health protocol mandate that we experience already, it will come together. It will go together with the Sunday law. Jesus mentioned there will be pestilences. You think it's just going to be the Sunday law test? Nope. It will come back with the same draconian health laws. They will come back together again. Let's go to Matthew now. Matthew 9. Where are we heading to? Matthew 9, verse 35. Remember, Spirit of Prophecy tells us, Jesus spent more time doing what? Finish it. More time doing what? Healing than preaching. There's a reason for that, brothers and sisters. There's a reason for that. We just read about it. And let's read chapter 9. Are you there? Beginning in verse 35. The Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues. What else? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And what else? Healing every what? Sickness. And what else? Every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because why? They fainted. And what else? Were scattered abroad. How? As sheep having what? No shepherd. Question for you. Where we did we as a church experience something like that? We were wearied, sainted. We were scattered abroad. As sheep. With no shepherd, without shepherd. Did this happen to us? Notice the context here. This happened in Israel. Were many sick there in Israel. The house of Israel. Can you imagine? Can you imagine this? I'm reminded of what Jesus also said in Matthew 4. In Matthew 4, after they rejected him, when he presented himself, as the Messiah or Luke 4 as well? When he what happened? Go fix it. You wanna fix it? When he presented himself as the Messiah, so what happened? They rejected him. And one of the rebukes that Jesus mentioned after that rejection, he said. There were many lepers in Israel. And none, none was cured except who, who was cured? Naaman. Question for you. Who was Naaman? Who was Naaman? Was Naaman an Israelite? No. Another question. Why? Was Naaman the only one around that time that was cured? Why was he the only one around that time? No, 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 no. Why was he the only one around that time that was cured? Huh? Can you tell me why? He in very good. He inquired of the prophet, the true prophet of God. Who was it at that time? Elisha, right? Elisha. Now, thank you, my brother. I appreciate that. He inquired of the true prophet. You, did, did you know that there were many other prophets around that time? But he inquired. He went to prophet. Well, think of it this way. During the pestilence crisis, did God make provision ahead of time? Did he raise a prophet for us to go to and inquire? What does the Lord say in this crisis? Did our leaders go to that prophet? No, they did not go to that prophet. No, they went to Babylon. Is that? Yes, they went to Babylon. Let's continue to read. It goes on to say, verse 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The what? The harvest surely is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Pause for a moment. Harvest? Harvest of what? You said harvest of souls. Souls from where? 
the house of Israel, brothers and sisters. Are you getting this? This is in the context here that Jesus talked about a harvest. It was not about the world when Jesus said this. Jesus was not talking about the harvest that's in the world. This was a harvest in Israel he was talking about. A harvest within Israel. They are sick spiritually, mentally, and physically. There's a great harvest in Israel. Did you know that, brothers and sisters? He goes on to say, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Into his harvest? To where? To the world? In this context here? No, not to the world. That is to the church. That is to the house of Israel. Over and over again, just from the few, those few passages, we see the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ must accompany by the healing and uh, what else? Healing ministry. The health message for the house of Israel. Notice what spirit of prophecy tells us here on the screen. We read uh, from Weavion Herald, uh, July 23rd, uh, 1914. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them. He gave what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. A discourse full of precious instruction for all who claimed to be his disciples. His deeds of sympathy in restoring the what? The sick to what? To health had aroused a deep interest in his work. In other words, he was shaking the house of Israel with the what? The health message. And had prepared the people to listen to his words. What had prepared the people to listen to his words? The healing ministry of Jesus Christ. The health message. Then it says, in every sense of the word, Christ was a what? Medical missionary he came to this world to preach the gospel and to heal the sick he came as a healer of the bodies as well as the souls of human beings his message was that obedience to the laws of the kingdom of god would bring men and women health and what else prosperity that's what god has given to us as a people the health message do you know another things that the health message does as we proclaim it it brings glory to the god of heaven go back to your bible second king chapter five where are we heading to second king chapter five. now we mentioned naaman a moment ago notice what second king chapter five said beginning verse 15 this is again the account of elisha with Naaman, you know the background. Naaman had leprosy. And uh, Naaman was counseled by Little Maid, as we know her, as Little Maid, to go to the true prophet of God for healing. Verse 15. But remember, Naaman hesitated a few times, but finally he decided to go. Verse 15. And he returned to the men of God and, and all his company and came and stood before him and said, this was after the healing now, after he followed Elisha's instruction, it says, behold, now, what did Naaman say? Read that for me, with me. What did Naaman say? Now I know what? That there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. So the health message that God, through Elisha, introduced to Naaman, caused Naaman to confess what? Now I know that there is what? No God in all the earth, but where? In Israel. Brothers and sisters, do you get the context? Think of the pestilence crisis. This was an opportunity for us to proclaim the precious jewels, the pre precious messages that God had given us so that uh, men and women 
who were being deceived by Babylon could say, like Naaman, now I know that there is no other God except in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. But was that the testimony? Is that what the world saw? Is that what they saw? No. Is that what they witnessed? No. But I thank God there were a few of us, even though we were being censored, but we did make a stand, a few of us. And there were some, and I have many testimonies of non adventists came across our videos, Amazing Word Ministries videos. Uh, let me share a story with you. I was in Grenada last year, back in June of last year. I was in Grenada. The, the sister who picked us up, uh, afterward, uh, she, she took us to the, uh, to the airport, uh, no, not airport, um, to the mall to buy a few things. While I was there at the mall, this man saw me and he started walking towards me. And then he said, I know you. I've seen you on YouTube. And then he said, yes, I know you. You're the reason why I did not take the vaccine. And I'm not a seven Adventist. Wow. That's what the men said. You're the reason why I did not take the Babylonian poison. And I'm not even a seven Adventist. And I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. The, and then we invited him to come to the, to the meetings because we were going to do the, some meetings. We can, he, and this was one testimony out of many that we have received. His, he came, God led him to the videos. And he's not even a seven Adventist. Imagine, think with me for a moment. Imagine. If the whole worldwide church had made that stand, imagine if the whole conference, starting with Ted Wilson, and you can go down the line, had made that stand, imagine how many precious souls who would have come to Jesus by now and uh, their bodies would not have been uh, so um, destroyed or even some that have already passed away as a result of the, the poison. Imagine where the souls would have been today. Imagine if the whole church was doing this. The God of heaven, as it says here, would have been glorified. Another passage, which is found in Luke chapter 17. Where are we heading to? Luke chapter 17. Go there with me. To the book of Luke chapter 17. And notice what the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 17. You know, one of the reasons why many seven Adventists were deceived by the leadership is because we've been told to only look for the Sunday law. Only look for the Sunday law. But anything else, just comply. Chapter 17 of the book of Luke, are you there? And the Bible says, notice carefully with me, in verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he saw them. He said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, what did he do? He turned back. And with a what? With a loud voice. What did he do? He glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a what? A Samaritan. No words, not a Jew. Imagine once again, if we had used opportunity during that health crisis to glorify God. Imagine how many modern day Samaritans would have come to know Jesus Christ, would have been he healed from the pestilence. Imagine brothers and sisters. Now, on the screen with me. And I have a question here. Did they lose their message? Now you're going to understand uh, in a moment. We have three clips 
prepare clip number one that I'm going to play in a moment. And based on those clips I am going to play, you're going to hear why or understand why I asked the question, did they lose their message? Or another way to put this, did they fail the mission? Now, I have three clips, as I mentioned, I'm going to play. In those three clips, you're going to hear kind of a confession by Mark Finley, but not really a confession. Not really a confession. Listen to what Mark, now by the way, this is recent. Uh, just, uh, this is their spring break meeting, the general conference is having right now. And this was doing uh, their session uh, a day or two ago. Mark Finley had this to say. Listen carefully. Let's play clip number one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I deeply appreciate the document. I Just appreciate one second. The I'm going to of the try to raise the, the value for you the here. Discussions we've had. The discussions have been open, honest, collaborative, and you can uh, replay that again for those watching online while I, I believe play that this can again. Embrace rather than repel. There may need to be some minor modifications of it. Can you hear? I wanted to spend a few, just a moment, um, on the relationship of message and mission. We in this house spend a great deal of time talking about the mission of the church, the need to reach every nation, kindred, tongue, and people with the gospel. But that mission is fundamentally dependent upon our message. That mission is fundamentally dependent upon our message. We in this house spend a great deal of time talking about the mission of the church, the need to reach every nation, kindred, tongue, people with the gospel. But Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I deeply appreciate the document. I appreciate the spirit of the document and the spirit of the discussions we've had. The discussions have been open, honest, what did say? collaborative. That mission is fundamentally dependent upon message. Is it on? Okay. That mission is, uh, I want you to remember this. That mission is fundamentally, fundamentally dependent upon what? Let's, let's, let's try that one more time. I don't want you to miss that point. That mission is fundamentally dependent upon what? Message. So our mission must be or is dependent upon what? What we proclaim. Just like we just read about Jesus Christ. Now the question is, did they fulfill that mission during the pestilence? Did they preach the message? There are many precious truths contained in the word of God. But what? Present truth that the frog needs now. Where was the message during 2020, 2021? What was the present truth for that time? What was it? Then that's a smoke screen. Listen to clip number one. In clip, I mean, I'm sorry, clip number two. In clip number two, he's going to articulate this very, very well. He's going to say, for example, if there is an erosion in our, let's say, the message of the state of the dead, right? If there is an erosion, in the, the fundamental belief of the state of the dead, then that would automatically impact our mission. It would automatically impact the belief of the second coming, right? Listen carefully. Play clip number two. That mission is fundamentally dependent upon our message. If there is an erosion of confidence in creation and a seven-day creation week, that impacts the Sabbath. If there's erosion of confidence in the, conf in the concept of the state of the dead, that impacts our preaching on the resurrection. 
if there is an erosion of confidence in the concept of the urgency of Christ's coming, that impacts the signs of the times. If there is an erosion of confidence in the remnant theology, God raising up a unique divine movement of destiny, that's going to impact our mission. Wait, is there any erosion of the half mention? does not mention the half But was there an erosion? As he said, in the health message, did they fail to preach it? Yes, they failed to preach it. So he mentioned many other doctrines that we hold dear as seven Adventists. The state of the dead, the second coming, signs of the times. Those are good. But what happened to the health message? Was there an erosion? And since there was an erosion, take with me now, for example. He said, if there is an erosion in... The uh, state of the dead message will impact what? The second coming or the, the uh, resurrection, right? Or the resurrection. So now let's put it this way. If there is, as there was, an erosion within the health message, what did that impact? Hmm? What was the impact? Hey, please don't sleep on me. Talk to me now. I want you to think. There was an erosion, right? In the health message. What was the impact? Nobody here knows what the impact was? Huh? For failing to present the health message based on everything we read thus far. What was the outcome, the impact? Or, let me put it this way. The consequences. Huh? Health. Many lives were destroyed and are still being destroyed. Above all, God was not glorified. Remember, because of the health message, what did Naaman say? Now I know there is a God only in Israel, no other places. Because he could not find a, a cure anywhere else because of the health message. It impacted, because they failed the mission, failed to preach the message. It impacted us, both spiritually and physically. But he doesn't want to mention that. He doesn't want to mention that in the next clip. Prepare that. He's going to say, they lost their message. He's going to tell a story about a Sunday church who failed to preach their message and how they lost their mission as a result of failing to preach the message. Now, by the way, before I play that clip, I saw a few others on YouTube playing those Mark Finley clips, praising Mark Finley, but they don't see what the men failed to say and how the general conference failed the mission. Listen carefully to clip number three. If we look at the history of mainline denominations, particularly in North America. They started as Bible-based, but as time went on, there was this slippage, this erosion. They've lost their sense of mission. I will never forget planting a church in one of the major cities in America. And we went to rent a non-Adventist church because we had no church. And the pastor took me around and he took me under a stairwell where they had little chairs for their Sunday school. And with a sorrowful look on his face, he said, we used to be packed in this church, but we no longer are. They lost their message, so they lost their mission. Oh, brothers and sisters, oh, they lost their message. So what happened as a result? They lost their mission. Oh, isn't that what happened to us? They lost them. Again, you go on YouTube, you'll find some uh, Adventists who are in full support of the conference, praising friendly. They don't even analyze what the man is saying or fail to say. Because you lost the message, then you lose the mission. Oh, brothers and sisters, the health message must have an impact on the church. It must shake the church of God. 
It must divide. I'll give you another passage here. You know, before the close of probation, you see, that health message must be proclaimed within Israel and shake Israel and separate Israel. Listen carefully. We read in John chapter 9. Again, the context here is healing. This is a chapter dealing with Jesus healing the blind men. But I don't want to read too much. The Pharisees question whether the man was born blind or not. And they call his parents. And remember, his parents represent those seven-day Adventists who are loyal to the conference. And they even deny that the man was born blind. They kind of say, yeah, we know he was born blind. But we don't know who healed him. But we know they knew. They knew who healed him. But because they did not want to be kicked out, they refused to mention the name of Jesus. Jesus was the one who healed him. You see, that was a separation there. You see, the pestilence crisis came to the church and it divides the church. Many rejected the health message. Jesus, our great healer. They deny it and they went straight to Babylon, which was really a slaughterhouse. Listen, let's keep on down. Chapter 9. Are you there, saints? For the sake of time, we're just going to go all the way down to verse 28. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses as for this fellow. Who are they calling this fellow? Jesus. We know not from whence he is. The man said and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened my eyes. Now, we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth since the world began. Was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man, that is Christ, were not of God, he could do nothing. Was he giving the Pharisees a Bible study here? Listen now. They, they said, they answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sin, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. What does that represent today? Do you remember... When the general conference, Ted Wilson, Mark Finley, and all the others were, quote unquote, trying to debunk some of us, a few of us, who were exposing the mark of the beast, or I should say, the Babylonian poison, and associating it with the mark of the beast. Remember the conference said, don't listen to those offshoots, to those extremists. They are telling you that poison is the mark of the beast. Well, we never said that. We never said it was the mark of the beast. Listen to us. We have experts from uh, conference health ministries. They have examined the Babylonian poison, the Babylonian sorceries. They said it's safe and effective. So don't listen to those men. Same thing here. Then uh, it says, Jesus heard that... He they had cast him out. And when he had found him and he said unto him, Thus thou believe on the Son of God. Now question for you. They cast him out. Where was he before? Talk to me now. Where was he before? He was under the conference. The conference did what to him? Cast him out. Where did Jesus find him? Out. Right? So where was Jesus himself? Was he with the conference? No. Oh. Christ was not with the conference. Christ was ready to receive those that the conference were casting out. You get it? Because these are, those individuals were the ones who had accepted present truth in this context here, the health message. It divided brothers and sisters. It divided the house of Israel then. It divided us during the pestilence crisis. And we are still feeling the effect of it. And the man answered and said, 
Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that taketh, talketh with thee. Lord, I believe. And he did what? Worship him. Oh, brothers and sisters. Present truth separates. If you are in present truth, you can not remain under the conference. There's no such thing as remaining under the conference and embrace present truth at the same time. They failed the mission and God cannot use them. You know why? Because another crisis that is associated with also health crisis and Sunday law is here. Notice on the screen. This says exclusive. What you can and cannot eat amid water. America's bird flu outbreak. According to ex-FDA food chief, avoid steak houses, salad dressing, and even some favorite desserts. The H5N1 bird flu strain has caused outbreaks on over a dozen farms across the U.S., infecting cattle and chickens and raising fears over the safety of the U.S. food supply. Now, if you read this carefully, some of those words here should ring a bell. They should sound familiar. Restrictions. They start to impose restrictions. Now, let's continue. Notice the next article. This says, bird flu. What's the next word? Pandemic. In future, EU warns of potential spread to humans due to lack of what? Immune defense. Wait, pause. What do they mean? They said one of the main reasons why this is spreading is because of humans' lack of immune defense. Question for you. What are they implying? Huh? More pricks, right? More poison. Let's go back to the screen. It says, these viruses continue to evolve like monsters. They are evolving globally. And with the migration of wild birds, new strains carrying potential mutations for mammalian adaptation could be selected if avian A H5N1 influenza viruses acquire the ability to spread efficiently among humans. Large scale, what's the next word? Transmission could occur due to what? To the lack of immune defenses against H5 viruses in humans. What are they advocating, calling for? To stop the so-called spread. Number one, you need to go back wearing the muzzle and because according to them you don't have a strong immune system to keep you safe against this uh, influenza therefore you need to get the poison listen now the next one makes it even clearer more scandemic fear eu officials one of the dangers of bird flu Lament the lack of, again, immune defenses against it. To prevent the risk of a bird flu pandemic, the EFSA recommended several key actions. What are they? These include enhancing surveillance targeting both humans. Pause. Enhancing what? Surveillance. Do you see the excuse there? To track your every move? Have we been there before? Huh? We've been there before. Let's continue. These include enhancing surveillance, targeting both humans and animals, ensuring access to quote-unquote rapid diagnostic. Wait, we've been there before too. You have to go there and open your mouth and your nose and let them check you out. Then it says fostering collaboration between the animal and human sectors. And what else? Implementing preventive measures such as what? The poison. What will be the position of Ted Wilson now? As we are being told, oh, he's exposing the mark of the beast. Hmm? 
He's, a, he's exposing popery. Well, the same agenda that he chewed and preached, it will be the same way because this is connected to climate change. Let's move on. Next. Chicken keepers must do what? Notice the words. Must do what? Register to what? Uh, to what? To beat bird, bird flu. Register. Do you see what's happening? You, you must register your chicken. Huh? Listen carefully. What happened if you don't register chicken? Your birds. Listen. The article goes on to say, chicken owners will need to register with the government or risk what? A 5,000 pounds fine under new rules to cover bird flu. Wait, we've been there before. You don't register your birds? Your chicken? No wonder Jesus says there will be pestilences. And that comes with the Sunday law. Let's continue. Keepers will have to provide contact details. Wait, you remember contact tracing? Remember that? How many birds from which species are kept? As well as where and for what purpose? The chain designed to help limit the spread of a quote-unquote highly pathogenic avian influenza, which has led to the hurling of millions of poultry and the death of an estimated 50,000 wild birds since 2021 in the biggest outbreak in the UK. This thing has been progressively growing. Talking about this so-called bird flu. Now they're starting to implement measures to enforce them. You don't register your chicken. This is the reason why, brothers and sisters, we are told uh, uh, that we have to be plant-based. We're not supposed to have chickens unless you're using them uh, uh, for m manure or whatever it is <laughs> for your garden. You don't see a repetition of what we just experienced is happening again. Whom should we trust? To lead the flock. Sister White said. She saw that there was a shaking. A crisis came upon the church. And everybody fled. She said everybody fled. There was no more conference. No more organization. And then there was a little time of respite. She said. And then one by one. Every seven Adventists started to come out of their holes. Their hiding place. And you know what else she said? She said, now they have chosen the leaders from among themselves. They were no longer depending on the general conference. I believe COVID was that crisis, brothers and sisters. COVID was that crisis. Listen, the connection with this influenza crisis, viruses crisis, with climate change. Keep in mind, behind climate change is what? Sunday law. Listen now. This says, support Green New Deal or you are a grandma killer. Remember when they told you if you don't wear your muzzle, you are a grandma killer? Remember that? American Medical Association said, curbing climate change can help stop the next what now? Viral shemdemic. Nearly 70. Listen carefully to the number there. Nearly 75% of emerging infectious diseases are now zoonotic, think Ebola, severe acute respiratory syndrome, Middle East respiratory syndrome, and most recently, the SARS, pestilence, Babylon pestilence crisis, the shemdemic, the virus that causes the COVID-19, Continued climate change is expected to exacerbate transmission in environment shared among plants, humans, and animals. Oh, for such a time as this, what does the world need, brothers and sisters? What would be the present truth for God's people and the world? What would be the present truth? A health message. A health message. Notice it goes on to say. It continues. A new approach called, what is the name? 
One Health is promoting national and international collaborative responses to mitigate actions that increase human to animal transmission risk. The health consequences of global warming are severe and will get worse. This is a call for Sunday law. Using a health crisis to enact Sunday law. Notice they said, one health, everybody, in other words, must take the Babylonian poison. Wait, we've been there before. And the Bible mentioned something like that before. If you go to Daniel 1, for example, for the sake of time, we're not going to go there. Nebuchadnezzar said, everybody must eat from the table. One health. But three, three men and Daniel stood up and said, no, we are going to glorify God. What message does the world need right now? The health message. Because this health crisis is all over the world. We've been dealing with this for the past four years now. Listen to what Spirit of Prophecy says. With all our treatments given to the sick, simple fervent prayer should be offered for the blessing of he what? Healing. We are to point the sick to whom? That's present truth right now. We are to point the sick to the compassionate Savior, not to the Babylon poison. And His power to forgive and what else? To heal through His gracious providence, they may be restored. Point the sufferers to their advocate in the heavenly court. Who is that advocate? That is Christ. Now let me pause here. If you point them to Babylon poison. Will they know Christ? Will they see Christ? No, they will suffer more. They will suffer more. Let's continue. There is a Savior who will reveal Himself in our sanatoriums. We were supposed to have sanatoriums, not hospitals. Do you know the difference? Not hospitals. You see, with hospitals, you have to go by the worldly policies. And you have to have Individuals there with all kind of degrees. We were not supposed to have universities either, by the way. When you start getting into degrees, master degrees, PhD, permanent head damage, then you have fallen into the policies of the world. Let's continue. It goes on to say, there is a savior who will reveal himself in our sanitariums to save those who will submit themselves to him. The suffering ones can unite with you in prayer, confessing their sin and receiving pardon. That is the present truth, brothers and sisters, for this time. That's what's going to also unite the flock under one leadership. And that is Jesus Christ. While the world is being united under one head, that is the papacy, we need to come together. Under the present truth for this time. To be under one leader. And that leader is Jesus Christ. Let me close by taking you to the book of Matthew chapter 9. Where are we heading to? Matthew chapter 9. We're going to close there in Matthew chapter 9. Again, all of those passages are dealing with Jesus' healing ministry. As we read a moment ago. Something similar. Notice again. In chapter 9 and the Bible says we read this a moment ago but by way of review and then we close here beginning in verse 35 and Jesus went about how many again? all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and what else? preaching the gospel of the kingdom and what else? healing every sickness and every disease among the people what was needed at that time? The health message that was present truth then. And as a result of that, many Christ and those many again were not in the world. Because this is dealing the house of Israel. It says in verse 36, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but 
the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. What the church needs right now, what Jesus needs right now is many from the house of Israel to come together and grounded in the truth for this time, present truth for this time. Then he will have a purified church ready to receive the latter rain power, ready to proclaim the loud cried message to the world. The leadership admitted, kind of admitted that they failed, the, the, they have failed greatly the mission. They failed it. It is up to a few, just like the common disciples. It was up to them now to take the mission to the world. It is up to each one of us here. We will not be in the majority within the church. We will be just a few. But our first mission is to cause a shaking within the house of Israel. The health message causes a shaking. Then it must cause a shaking within the house of Israel. If all of us were quiet during the pestilence crisis, you realize there would not have been a shaking in the year 2020, 2021. If all of us were quiet, thank God there were a few of us who were putting the health message above the Babylonian health message. And that caused a shaking in the church and still causing a shaking in the church. By God's grace, tomorrow, Lord willing, tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon, we're going to look at some other ways that we are being shaken as a church. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God, which are in heaven, we want to thank you for the precious truths that you have given us and entrusted unto us for such a time as this. Many have sacrificed their lives to preserve the truth. So help us, Father, to remember that. Even your son sacrificed his own life on Calvary's cross so that he might bring many sons and daughters back to him. Help us to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen.